Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so my body clock is thrown all the way off, man. Thrown off 130%. I went to sleep last night about ooh, eight something, nine o'clock, and woke up at like 3 a.m. and been up ever since, believe it or not. I ain't had a wink of sleep since about 2.57 a.m. when I looked over at the clock. So, um, yeah, took a couple seconds to do a couple exercises here and there. Uh, in between drafting fantasy basketball teams on the Yahoo account. You guys know I'm a fantasy draft um, obsessor, I guess you can say. I'm, I'm really ridiculous about that. Got all my fantasy football teams. Now I'm getting all my basketball teams, having a lot of fun with that. And uh, what it's allowed me to do is just take a look at all the rosters as usual. Same old stuff, nothing new. Um, the Lakers, the last thing I heard about the Lakers was that they're trying to um, – just determine what the best move is for them in regards to Russell Westbrook. It seems as if he's not going to be traded anytime soon. Not surprised. Nothing new there. We've already talked about that a million and a half times. Um, essentially, what I expect the Lakers to do is wait till the season starts, just like we always say. Um, see what happens once the season starts. See if we can get his value to play up to some type of good level, which I expect. And then hopefully we can trade him to a team that will ultimately um, – be able to quickly buy him out and then get him to us a home because the team that he's going to be traded to just like us should not be trying to have him at 47 million dollars this upcoming season if they can help it <clears throat> so i expect them to possibly stretch that if necessary uh depending on when that trade takes place if it's trade if it's a trade deadline you might as well just play it out depending on the team but um if for some reason it's done within the next couple of weeks um, then, then I expect him to get bought out. So hopefully that all falls into place for Russell Westbrook. I want to see him land on his feet and get back to playing good basketball. I don't know that he can do that next to LeBron James in this Los Angeles Laker uniform. Um, I just don't think the fit will ever necessarily be right with him and Bron because neither one of them shoot enough uh, to make it make sense for them to be on the floor as much as they're going to have to be together. So it's, it's, it's ever so important, especially with Russell's deficiencies in certain areas he just can't really compliment Bron in ways that we need him to and we know that but um if we do decide to bring him off the bench uh which Patrick Beverly says is cap as we talked about last night but if Darvin Ham does decide to go that route I think it will benefit the team quite a bit early on that way we don't have to worry about that we simply do not have to worry about whether or not the fit is going to make any sense with him and Bron he can be on the floor when Bron it's not and we can make roster um rotational changes around those two uh, where necessary until uh, we can get that trade going. So that's really what it's all about, man. I, I know they're saying they're not going to be able to get him traded anytime soon, but um, I'm 100% certain that the goal is still to get him traded before the end of the season. Ain't no doubt about that. We must, must, must do that. Uh, so right now it's not pressing for us to do it just to be doing it. We got to get a good deal for us, of course, so we'll make sure we get that done, I believe. Um so, yes, a lot of excitement surrounding the team right now because of the acquisition of Dennis Schroeder, as we've talked about as well. And um, the fact that he's playing so well right now, coming off of the FIBA uh, championship tournament where he was just averaging, I think, upwards of like 20 points or something like that. Several assists, some good boards as well. So he was a star caliber player out there for his country. And, um, you know, for us to get him at $2 million is just an anomaly. It's... it's, it's uh, What's the word? It's, just, it's not even supposed to happen. So uh, we're, we're super excited about that. And uh, now he makes our roster look a little different. Now we have a bit more stability in our bench. We have someone we can go to on our bench to score no matter what. Uh, and that's that's really exciting to me because I know what type of level he can play at when he's confident. And, um, you know, given the fact that he did fit pretty well next to Braun, I think he's going to get a lot of running time with him. I think in theory he and... Uh, Patrick Beverly should be able to fit as um, miniature combo guards down there who kind of do um, some good things for us, stretching the floor offensively and stuff like that. So I kind of like the dynamic of them being attacking guards for certain lineups and stuff like that. Um, Thomas Bryan, I'm curious to see how his conditioning is going. Um, Damian Jones, how are we going to work him into the equation? Can we see situations where we see a twin tower effect with him and Anthony Davis and in them rotating and putting... Um, you know, those two on the floor together, which would be interesting, Thomas Bryant and Damian Jones, since Thomas can stretch the floor and Damian uh, plays more in the paint. When you find a way to get that kind of length on the floor, 
It can give us a dynamic that allow us to match up with teams like Cleveland and Minnesota, which is very, very important. So we're going to have to work that into our equation because this season, if teams don't have that dynamic, uh, they're going to have a very difficult time against those two teams particularly. And there's several more who have that dynamic as well, including Detroit. Teams with long centers that can do a lot of different things um, who will be on the floor at the same time, double seven-footers like the San Antonio Spurs used to have when they trapped at Tim Duncan and had David Robinson. It is very important. Of course, we had that dynamic as well with Bynum, Powell, and Lamar. So anytime you had that dynamic on the floor, it can be a good thing. You want three seven-footers, preferably all who can do different things, all who are competent three um, defenders. When you have that type of dynamic, uh, dangerous things occur. <laughs> very dangerous things occur. So... I'm excited about the lengths that we put down there for ourselves. Uh, that rotation of bigs should keep Anthony Davis healthy, make it so that he can take a day off, two days off, a week off, and we should still have plenty of front court depth uh, to hold us down. Cole Swider, super excited about him. Been hearing a lot about what's going on there. So my understanding is that Cole Swider does have a spot with the roster. Now, I'm not clear on who all has the um, roster spots with the Lakers but as I looked at the big team's roster Cole Swider, Scotty Pippen were both on there uh, and so was Doug, um, not Doug I gotta get used to that, Max Christie um, was also on there as well so um, does that mean they have a roster spot? Does that mean that we're still trying to figure out if we want to give them those roster spots? I'm not clear on that but I want to see all three of those guys with the big team and of course you guys know Jay Huff is also somebody I think should be called up this year. So, like I said, it's not it's not imperative that the Lakers uh, fill their roster spots necessarily. It's not overly imperative that we uh, just hurry up and sign a Shabazz Muhammad or something like that, as we discussed last night. Not necessary um, at all to me. Not not in place of giving those guys their opportunities. Now, for some reason, we behind the scenes they find out those guys aren't ready. Then, of course, you got to do your due diligence and. Uh, and, and fill the roster spot, but I just don't believe that's the case. I really don't. I trust those scouts that we've put in place, and I think the guys that we have uh, have ridiculous upside from where they're supposed to be, which are undrafted players. Uh, and there's there's nothing about them that should be undrafted, in my opinion. So now that we um, are excited about those pieces, I just want to see us pull them into positions uh, to get real minutes with the real uh, team. So even though the, the G League is going to give them more minutes, I'm excited about them playing in the D League as well. But uh, those are pieces we need, all three of them, in my opinion. All four of them, actually, are pieces we could very much use. Um, so, you know, obviously we have enough guards, so I think it would be more imperative that we call up Huff and Swider, to be honest with you. I really do think that it's much more pressing that we fill those spots rather than calling up Pippen and Christie right away because, again, guards everywhere. But... Uh, Pippen and Christie are excellent perimeter defenders, and we could use more of that on the wing. If either one of those guys could slip in and play small ball three, that would be really, really helpful for us as well. May not necessary, be necessary, may not. But um, since they are such high-level defenders, in my opinion, uh, it would be great if they could do a little more since we're lacking in that area. Uh, so I would try it out. You know, I look at I look at uh, Scottie Pippen as a very sturdy young man. You know what I mean? He's young, he's young and he's not as tall as his dad. But you can put him on guys. He reminds me of uh, a Josh Hart a lot. And you can put him on people that are a little bit bigger than him. And he's going to have some success. He's going to hound them defensively. Um, Cole Swider with his length. and uh, Not Cole Swider, excuse me. Uh, Max Christie with his length. Same thing. It's going to be able as he gets stronger. I don't think he's quite there yet in terms of the strength like Pippen. But... As he puts that strength on, we're going to be able to put him on players, and he's going to disrupt them with his length and his ability to move side to side. So, again, we should not hesitate just because these guys are undrafted. We have had so much success with undrafted guys. Kuzma, obviously. Uh, I think about guys like David Nwaba. I think about, um, of course, um, Austin Reeves. We've had a lot of success. we got to just continue to trust that. Um, our scouts know what they're doing in regards to getting us some pros who have upside. We don't need the draft. <laughs> Straight up, we don't need it. So that's that's what I'm here to say. I think I think it's, it's a balancing act for our guys, um, our, our GM rather, to just get the right contracts in place that are easily maneuverable 
easy to move around so that he can get those roster spots open without any frustration. Because I'm telling you, you bring in a multi-year guy like Conley, you bring in a multi-year guy like Fournier or something like that, and it's going to be much more difficult to create roster spots as those guys start to get ready for their opportunities. Um, and that's an underrated aspect of what you want to do as a, as a GM. You really do want to remain flexible without some of those bad, hefty contracts that uh, that teams really want to give us for Russell Westbrook. We want to stay away from those because we do have these guys that we want to create easy roster spots for. So we need expiring contracts or at least a path to open roster spots as next season approaches. Um, I just think that that's a very important thing. You want to keep at least two or three roster spots open for those scouts and their greatness because I'm telling you, they're going to keep bringing us talent. They are. So that's that's something I'm super excited about over the next several years. So, yeah, that's what I got to say, man. Obviously, I'd love to have more to talk about. There's a lot of recapping. It's a lot, a whole lot of just speculative conversation right now. Um, if anything, I just want to tap in with you guys, say hello. It's not actually much to talk about just yet. But when we do have something, we will talk. And I'm pretty sure there will be more very soon. So that's pretty much what I got to say, man. BDF44, thank you all for watching. I'm out.